Welcome back to the Jatai Academy. Today we're going to do a technical deep dive on cutting hair one length, all the perils and pitfalls, and all the things you need to do to improve. So let's get started. All right, a one length haircut is really a classic, and it's great for anybody that wants something from a very conservative type of shape to something that's actually pretty edgy if you do something very French and short. So there's a lot of versatility and a lot of options that you have when you're doing that type of haircut and it fits a lot of people. So it only makes sense that it is one of the most foundational haircuts that you can learn. So there's a lot of things that goes into cutting hair one length. So the first thing we need to take into consideration is the size of our section. The size of our section is going to designate how much hair we're going to cut at one time. If we have too thick of a section, say that something like this, and I have my scissors, I'm going to go through and try to cut. And what will happen when I go to cut, you'll see the hair get pushed out of the scissor. So that ends up not cutting me a straight line. So what it ends up happening is cutting it shorter on one side, it gets longer and then it gets shorter again. So I get this little bit of a bevel. So if I keep doing that across the entire shape, I'll have little bevel, little bevel, little bevel, little bevel. And the first section, it may not show up very prevalently, but as I start to build my shape, that's gonna become more and more evident and it's gonna make my one length, not so much one length looking. So the first thing, make a smaller section. So now by taking a thinner section, a more appropriate size section, when I go through to cut, there's not so much hair overloading my scissor, so it minimizes the amount of scissor push that I have. Now I'm using a very, very sharp pair of scissors. These are the Jatai Kiltos. It's the sharpest pair I got, and it will cut a lot of hair, and it will cut it very cleanly. But no matter how sharp my scissor is, I can easily overload it by taking a section that's too large. Sometimes the hair is just resistant to being cut. So I need to compensate for that scissor push by my scissor movement. So as I go through, I'll comb my section down, make sure everything is nice and even and flat. I'll put my scissor in, I'll have, oh, get that out of the way. Open the blade. As the blade starts to close on the hair, I will pull back as I apply the cut. And that will give me a much straighter, cleaner line by compensating for the amount of scissor push that I have. Now it's very subtle and each scissor will determine how much drawback that you have to apply when you cut. The sharper the scissor, the less drawback that's required. The duller the scissor, the more drawback that's gonna be required. After I go through and cut, that's gonna give me a much cleaner, straighter line. Now the next thing I need to focus on is when I comb the section, when I'm combing the section and holding the section, that's just as important as the application of the scissor cut. So to make sure I can cut a completely blunt and straight line, if I'm holding it in my hands, I'll comb everything clean from the root all the way down to my fingers. I put my fingers in with very little to no tension. And you notice how I roll my fingers horizontally. I'm not doing this to where I can see my palm. I want that rolled down to where this is horizontally. If I cut like this, I will actually cut the top of the section shorter than the underneath part of the section and cause it to flip and shift. So I'll apply layering to that section by cutting the top layer shorter. And that's not what we're going for when we're trying to cut everything as blunt and one length as possible. So make sure you are maintaining a horizontal, perpendicular to the floor section as I go through and cut. Another thing I need to pay attention to is the amount of elevation that I have. When I'm cutting this section here in my finger, I have one finger worth of elevation which means I'm gonna have a little bit of graduation, which means the top layer is gonna be a little shorter than the underneath layer, right? It's gonna be very slight, but I still wanna make sure I can comb that straight down on the skin, go through and clean that up. Now on my doll head, obviously I don't have skin to cut on, so it's a little harder, but for demonstration purposes, you get the idea. 
Now, as I cut this hair in the back of the head, when I'm trying to cut one length, the head position is going to affect how much of an undercut that I'm going to have because the skin on the back of someone's head will expand and contract based upon their head position. So if they're in an upright position like this, it's going to be compacted. If they lean forward, it's going to stretch that skin out. So if I lean their head forward to make it easier for me to cut this section, I have to realize that when they raise their head back up, the underneath is going to be shorter than the top section. So that's going to give me an undercut, which is okay if that's what you're going for. But if I'm looking for everything being completely as blunt as possible, then I can't have them tilt their head too far forward or after they do hit tilt their head forward and I cut it, I have them go back up in a neutral position, comb everything down on the skin, clean that up. So that way I cut off any overcut that I have. So that brings me to my body position. If I'm standing directly in front of my client, of my model, and I'm going to cut, look at how cramped everything is with my body. My elbows are tucked in, my wrist is really cramped, and I'm standing right in front of it. And this is not a very comfortable position for me. Since this isn't comfortable, what I'll have a tendency to do is bring my hands out, roll my fingers forward, and then cut with my fingers flipped up like this. This also adds to inconsistencies in my cut because now I've just layered this right side because the top part is shorter than the underneath part. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm off to the side so that way my scissors can hit into the section unobstructed by my body and the mechanics of my body. So as I comb everything down straight and through, I can step off to the side and then come through and cut that straight across. I comb down, I have a lot less graduation to clean up, a lot less layering, and it's gonna give me a much harder, stronger, straighter line than if I'm all cramped up. And then on top of that, it will also be much easier on my body. So I don't end up hurting as much at the end of the day and I don't compromise myself as much physically. Follow us on social media at Jatai Feather. Another thing I need to pay attention to is how I comb each section. So you notice that I put three fingers on the back of the comb and two fingers in the front. And then this way, I can rotate my comb. Holding the scissor, I take my ring finger and hold the scissor, two fingers in the back of the comb and two fingers in the front of the comb. So I can still rotate the comb. I'll go through, I'll take my center section, I'll put the comb facing away from me as I comb down and through. I hook the comb to create a little bit of tension and then comb that into my finger. So now I have everything straight from the root all the way down to my fingers. So now when I go through and cut that straight across, I can get a nice, clean, even straight line. I have to comb everything clean from the root down in order to not have to continually clean this line up. Because if this is spongy and sloppy in my combing, every time I comb it, I'm going to end up with new hair to cut, new hair to cut, new hair to cut. So I want to make sure I get everything as clean as possible the first time that I go through and comb it so I don't have more to clean up because of the imperfection of my technique. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and click the notification bell to be alerted of any future videos. Now the last thing that we need to pay attention to, and that we really need to perfect in all of our hair cutting, is cutting directly on top of our previously cut guide. This is going to come with experience and practice and, and strength and dexterity in our hands and our fingers. So I'll take my previously cut guide, I have my next section. You can see that there. I'll comb everything straight through and down. There's my line. So I'll put the scissor in directly on top 
of my previously cut guide. I'm not going any shorter. I'm not going any longer. I want that directly on top of the guide. I don't want it shorter on one side, longer on the other. I have to repeat that every time. And that's what makes this haircut so challenging is that I have so many different variables. I've got scissor push. I've got elevation with my fingers. I've got body position that may throw my line off. I got combing it directly down on top of my previously cut guide and cutting directly on top of that over and over and over hundreds of times throughout the haircut. And it's very easy to miss one of those steps along the way and not get as clean and blunt of a line as possible. After I've gone through and cut a line, there's a couple of ways that I can clean this up because I have it held in my finger, so I'm gonna get a little bit of graduation. I can get a straight line, but I'm gonna get a graduation. So one way, I can comb everything down, use my comb and the spine of the comb, use the spine of the comb to comb that down, and then I can go through with my scissor and clean any of that up. Another way that I can do is I can use my comb and my scissor and push that down into each other and then go through and you'll see this a lot by point cutting real small little pieces to make sure that my line is as straight as possible. Now the scissor tends to cut much smaller little snips of hair much cleaner and straighter and doesn't have a scissor push when I'm doing just little micro snips like this. So that's why you'll see a lot of people will go through and clean up their bobs by point cutting into it so I don't have to worry about a scissor push, especially on dry hair. That brings us to a wrap up of all the things that we need to pay attention to when we're cutting a straight line. Combing it clean from roots all the way down to where you're cutting your line, scissor push, and scissor pull to compensate for how thick your section is and how sharp your scissors are. The sharper the scissor, Kyoto please, the sharper the scissor, the easier it is because the less push you'll get. The smaller the section, the less push you'll get as well. Also, not flipping your fingers when you're combing it, keeping your body open and push to the side so that I don't force my scissor to roll one way or the other, making sure that everything is nice and level, making sure the head is level, not letting your client sit like this when you're cutting a perfectly straight line. And then when they get up, it's like, oh, uh oh, that's wrong. So please check out the Tai Academy. There's a lot of really great information on there. There's entire hair cutting courses that we've made for free, razor cutting courses. There's all kinds of great content. Also, please leave us a comment what you'd like to see in the future. Ask us any questions if you'd like, and uh, we will see you next time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.